There is a huge leap between sparring and your first fight, particularly for kickboxers and Muay Thai fighters. Boxers in boxing gyms tend to spar at a pretty high intensity and grapplers, of course, train at basically 100%. But with kickboxing, not only are you dealing with like the nerves and the pressure and your body feeling like you're fighting in a dream, you're also getting punched and kicked probably harder and faster than you've ever been punched and kicked. That's why point kickboxing or point Muay Thai is one of the best ways to get some experience and exposure and practice. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about point, like point, like, like point stuff where you just like touch the guy and then they say stop. But there's a lot of space between that and getting your skull caved in in your first fight that involves striking. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of point kickboxing matches, a couple from Nate and also our new guy Tyler, his first match under the IKF PKB. I'm going to break down these matches, but I'm going to explain our strategy and the thought process behind how we do these things because we don't actually go to win. In fact, I instruct Nate several times to stop doing things that would allow him to easily win the fight. The biggest benefit to these is that you get some exposure and some time under some lights in front of a crowd with a referee. It's a very, very different experience than just sparring, even high intensity sparring, even high intensity sparring with someone you don't know. There's just something about a crowd of people watching that makes uh, it much more nerve wracking. So here we go with Nate's first match and he's going to start out jabbing a lot. And once Nate has an excellent jab, that's one thing he has an excellent jab. He's going to find a home for that right hand a couple times, but it's because of those jabs. Now this guy has his hands far too low and he's he's responding too much to these punches. That kick was right out on the end of that kick. You know, watch this. Wow. <laughs> so Nate, you see Nate stopping here. You're supposed to kind of monitor your contact and your output. Now, if a guy is properly defending himself, the, you can up the intensity. But when it gets one-sided, they tend to stop these things. Now, had he thrown that kick a little harder, that would have been a good one. Give me left kick, left kick. Left kick that back leg for me, please. Left kick his back leg for me, please. Left kick the back leg. There we go. And now back of the right leg, please. Back of the, uh, back of the lead leg. There you go. Just listen to the corner and you know what to block. Stop, 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 stop. All right, guys, we're done here. We're done here. Give it up for him. Give it up. Give it up. So you have to sort of have control. There's no knockouts allowed. And the purpose of this is we want practice. We want more reps. We don't just want practice at winning. We want reps of trying new strategies or listening to the corner and things like that. That's the promoter, Johnny Davis, uh, who runs these events. I'll put a link to his website down in the description below. Him picking on Nate because Nate was like, I wasn't hitting him too hard when nobody nobody ever accused him of hitting too hard. I just I was calling like random techniques to see if you could like do them while I was calling for him. And I even messed up and I said the back of his right leg, but you knew what I meant. You know I meant the back of the lead leg. That was like so perfect. Like I, I said the wrong technique, but he knew what I meant and did the right technique. He said, ah, oh, one of the punches. I was like, you should, you should stop this. Yeah. And then that right hand landed. I was like, oh, damn. Yeah. So in his next match, I instruct him to only throw his left hand and his left kick. I, I try to get him to only do that. It doesn't quite work out. But let's look at Tyler. This is Tyler's first striking competition ever. He just came to us about six months before this tournament. And I'll tell you what, the nerves in these are very similar to the nerves in a full contact fight. There's not a huge amount of difference. Tyler's a southpaw, and all I'm gonna be asking for Shoot the left, shoot the left, right kick to the outside is the left hand and the right kick, and I want him to circle to his right and cover that hand. This guy's moving his head pretty good, but, but what happened is Tyler gets a little addicted to that inside leg kick. Don't worry about that. I want the outside. Combo, combo, end of the kick. There you go. Combo, 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 end of the kick. Hey, it's, it's all you now. It's all you. Go, there you go. Circle, circle right, circle right. Cover his hand, circle right. Cover his hand, circle right. 
good push kick there. I need him just to, what I just need is I need him to step to his right a little more while covering that lead hand. Like that. That's perfect. And then the opportunities will present themselves as long as you keep doing that. I'm asking for a specific uh, feint that we've been working on, but when you're in there, it just doesn't feel like you can do the stuff that you're supposed to be doing. <laughs> it just feels... It just feels like it's not gonna work. They feel too far away, or you are worried about your opponent hearing your corner. It's just all kinds of things going through your mind. But just if you just throw it right when the corner says it, it'll be fine. So they give Tyler the first round, and in these, you only, if you win two rounds, they only do the two rounds. So if a guy's up two rounds, they don't have the third, and that's for the sake of time and for the sake of safety, I think. But what's funny is here, I know he's wondering, like, what now? I just need him to get his breath under control because, honestly, uh, obviously I came up with a, a few things that I wanted to tell him, I, it, just reinforcing what he already knows he's supposed to do, but I was overall extremely happy. After this, he told me, he was like, man, I just felt like I did everything wrong. And I was like, no, nah, dude, you looked, you looked great, particularly for someone with no experience. But here we are with round two. Cover it, go. Let's go. Let's get to work right away. Right away. You first, Tyler. Right? Left hand, right kick. Left hand, right kick. This guy did pretty good. Uh, I think if he'd been a little more active and aggressive, he'd given Tyler more problems. But Tyler's footwork, generally we focus a lot on footwork and positioning and range and timing more so than like just combo training i don't really believe in combos of the day I, I like training with principles and strategies first and now i'm getting my outside kick and my left hand behind it and you see how effective that is i don't know what that was let's look at that again look at tyler we picked on tyler a lot about that punch look at this uh super thing punch i don't know what to call that but when he, look, when he goes back to, uh, you know, covering that lead hand, I'm going to get him to circle. I'm begging for him to circle right again. But I want the straight left and then a right kick behind it. Look how good it lands when they throw it. And look at the positional advantage that it gives them. But what happens is people tend to throw that rear leg and they feel really good about it and they enjoy doing it because it's more satisfying. And people tend to get hooked on their rear leg. And this is another benefit of this. They stop time for safety to adjust this guy's headgear. Now, when this guy switches to southpaw, I want Tyler to get really aggressive. Whenever I'm saying closed stance, I want you to go. Like he should be throwing down with this guy when the stance is closed. So what's funny is, is you think, well, this is just a little point kickboxing match. But if you look at look at his face, you look at the <laughs> Tyler's an athlete. Tyler played sports his whole life. He's competed in many many different endeavors. But you see that that look, like what the, what the, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter and it doesn't feel like semi contact in the moment. These are an excellent way to test yourself outside of the gym. It is the perfect halfway point between sparring and full contact fighting. But now, let's look at Nate's last match. First minute is jabs only. That's all he's allowed to do. I, I told Nate jabs only. It didn't really start out that way. I wanted only jabs and only his left kick. And you see, obviously, his, his good lead hand. But when, when you're good with the lead hand, you find your way to the right hand. You see his good boxing. And this guy just kind of shelling up, which is, it's good that he's defending himself, but it's clear there's an experience mismatch. But this guy is throwing down a little bit uh, more enthusiastically than the first guy. But Nate's hands are just fast, and he's got a bit of a reach advantage on him. When your jab is good, your right hand will find a home. But I'm, I'm worried. I told you to stop throwing that thing yeah yeah and i had to resist the urge right here to to make fun of him and tell him yeah yeah that's why your that's why your foot hurts 
because I told you not to throw that kick. Because not only are you in danger of hurting it, but we don't want this thing to get stopped because we want more practice and we want more reps. Now, when this happens, they give the guy an opportunity to talk to his corner, talk to his coach. That's something that you wouldn't get to do in a full contact fight. You would just be thrown in there, and if you weren't ready, you would find out quickly, and it would be a very painful, very costly lesson. In this environment, you get to find out these things without as much risk, without as much danger. So they let it continue, and now I've told Nate, only his left and only his lead kick, and you'll see he has more trouble which is fine. It's totally fine that we give this guy some concession, not just for safety purposes, but we need the practice. Nate needs the practice of listening and doing you know, better with just his lead hand. Sort of like handicapping yourself. You see, he threw his right and then he pulled it back. He realized that that wasn't part of the game plan. That's what I want, look at that. Look, he's making a lot of cool stuff happen with just his lead side. You see, when he's only using his lead side, he has to be more defensively responsible, use more timing, use more range, and, and he has to be more selective in his shots. He can't just overwhelm the guy with hand speed only. I tell him he's got the best jab in all of South Carolina. <laughs> I like to gas my guys up. I like to tell them how good they are. You know, I don't believe, I, I hate when I see coaches like telling their fighters how terrible they are or like, you gotta do better. Like you can have a sense of urgency, but your your job is to be supportive. So here we are at the second round and I'm, I'm, I've, I've told Nate he's got the best jab in the world and I wanna see how good it is. And that if he is that good, that he can win with just his jab and just his lead kick. Which makes it hard, you know, even, even when there's a, a, a skill disparity or a reach advantage on your part, like if you can only use one side of your body, that makes it extremely difficult. But I want him to use techniques that he doesn't use all the time, like that lead teep is not something that's a big part of his arsenal. And you see him get, he gets pushed out of bounds with it and he has, he has trouble setting stuff up. Look, he went to throw the right and stopped. <laughs> And this is, this is gonna be uh, frustrating for Nate, you know, he's, it, but this is what's best. See, he's having a lot more trouble, and this guy's able to be more aggressive, but that gives us a chance to practice things like defense. Now I want this off time jab. Check it out, right here. And now watch this teep kick. It works better. That one worked better and he had better balance off of it than the first time and that's, that's what you need. You need practice of techniques that you don't normally use. Nate doesn't usually fight going backwards. He doesn't usually fight with just his lead leg or just his lead hand. But I told him like if you're, if you're that good, if you're ready for the next level of competition, you can win with just your lead hand and just your lead leg. Because if you don't practice something, you're not gonna do it under pressure. And if you practice under pressure, that practice will be even more effective. So we don't use these just to practice fighting. You can practice fighting all kinds of ways, but there's very few opportunities to get practice being under some scrutiny, some attention, a crowd, lights, cameras, a coach yelling, another fighter being coached, a fighter you don't know, someone that's not your training partner whose body language and tendencies you're familiar with. There's a lot of things you can practice at these that you can't practice anywhere else short of actual full contact fighting. But leave me some comments down below how you think we did. I was very satisfied with everyone's performance, but I'd like to hear from you, things you think we could work on, and also, do you want to see more of these? Because we can do that. I can bring you inside more of these events and kind of give you the inside scoop on how this all works. I, I think that might be super valuable if you are thinking about competing or just starting competing. And if you want more fitness tips, self-defense techniques, gear reviews, as well as concepts and principles that make you hard to hurt, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications.